Hi, I'm Nick Natarella with AdWise Creative. After you've been doing all this editing, how do you add some background music in Adobe Audition? A very common element, whether it's your podcast or your YouTube videos, very common element is music, some background music to help set the mood, to set, help set the atmosphere, maybe even accent a couple things in your episode. Well, I'm gonna show you how to do that without overpowering what's going on. Let's get to it. By the end of this video, you're gonna know when you can use music and when you can't. And a really handy trick for setting levels so your music doesn't overpower what's already going on. We don't wanna miss your content, right? So I'll show you that in the, on the second half. All right, the general guideline of when you can use music and when you can't. Actually, it's much shorter if you just do the opposite. When can't you use music? when it's not yours. That's when you cannot use that music. A lot of people, and I deal with this almost every day in my radio production side of my business. On the radio production side, people will be like, oh yeah, hey, wouldn't it really great to have that Taylor Swift song underneath it? Uh, yeah, it would be, but I think you've got a better way of spending $150,000, don't you? Yes, you can use that music, if you pay for it. Now, if it's going to be some really hot pop song or anything a band has done or any type of music that you hear on the radio or in an album or on a CD or at a concert or something like that, any kind of that music, that's an immediate no. You cannot do that. I even had some, some folks who wanted to use the, uh, the sound effect from, what was it, Law & Order. Remember the dum-dum? The guy was a lawyer and I'm like, you're really pushing it. You probably shouldn't use that because it is very recognizable. Oh gosh, in the lawyer realm, you're probably better off not using the sound effect as well. So avoid that altogether. Back in, I think it was 1997, the movie Varsity Blues wanted to use Thunderstruck by ACDC. And in order to do that, they paid $500,000 for that cut. To this date, that is the most ever paid for a music snippet, and they didn't even use the whole song, they used a uh, nice chunk of it, but that was the most ever paid for a music for music rights in a movie, and that still tops the charts. $500,000 for Thunderstruck by ACDC. That's gotta be somewhere in a, in a Trivial Pursuit answer. Isn't that, isn't that trivial? The flip side of that is, so make sure you do not use copyrighted music. Nothing that you would like snap your fingers to or dance to or anything like that. Another one would be, let's say if you've got a friend of yours who likes to tickle the ivories and they've got no problems with uh, making a theme song for you. Great, run with it. And they're gonna let you use it for free, right? That's even better. I would strongly suggest you get it in writing from them or better yet, why don't you have your lawyer write something up that says that you get to use what they produced in their garage back in 2023. Because there's another case. Back in 2012, I believe it was, there were a bunch of kids, they were adults now, but they were a bunch of kids when they recorded the lines, we don't need no education, we don't need no thought control. The dark sarcasm in the classroom, hey teacher, leave them kids alone. Sound familiar? Well, now that they were adults, they wanted royalty payments. So be sure to get it from your friend back in 2023 that wrote you the music that everything is legit because decades down the road, you don't want them coming to you asking for the payments now that you're all rich and famous, right? Cover your tracks. Now, out of those 23 kids, five of them decided to collect their royalties and ultimately it ended up being less than $400 a piece. But still, do you wanna go through that hassle? I don't think so. Besides. How much is the friendship really worth? Wouldn't that be much more valuable to hang on to? So get it written up, get it all taken care of. Now, if you know somebody who has a podcast and they're thinking about adding some music or something like that, what do you do? What do you use? Be sure to tag them down below in the comments or share this episode with them. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and subscribe and, and get the notifications. That way if something pops up, they'll know about it too and get them to watch this episode on music. So what are you gonna use? you're gonna use specifically what we call either royalty-free or 
production music. And there are websites all around, just type, literally go to Google and type royalty-free music. There are all kinds of places that will have it for you. Some of them you may even be able to use for free as long as you give them a little credit for it and maybe a link. That's much easier to do on YouTube and in your podcast episode. You can put it in the notes, obviously, and it helps them out. They get a little free advertising out of it, saying that this was their music in your podcast. Or there are other places that sell cuts, and I mean, we're talking anywhere between a dollar to $20. For a needle drop. It's not a big deal. Once you download it and you pay the fee, you can use it on your uh, podcast or in your YouTube channel. But you've got to have the right stuff. You've got to make sure that you've done the royalty-free stuff or gotten clearance for it. You can make a $10 mistake. You can get it for $10 or you can make a $500,000 mistake. I don't know about you, but I can think of a lot of ways to spend $499,990 other than giving it to ACDC. I'm just saying. Now, now that you've got your background music, how are you gonna use it? Intro, outro, maybe even under the content. I have a hard time with the content, but that's just me. A lot of people are using it now and you really, really need to turn it down, turn it way down than you normally would under normal background volumes. But let's go over that real quick. So let's head on over to the studio. So first let's take a look at how you would set levels for say an intro or an outro, whether it be your podcast, intro and outro, or maybe your YouTube channel, intro and outro, anything like that. This is the little trick that I use to make sure that music does not overpower the beginning of uh, the beginning of the voiceover. So first, let's make sure we have plenty of music to work with here. And what I'm going to do, let's just assume that this is much longer. And th here's the voiceover. Here's our voiceover that we're working with today. It's Ice Spice season. Duncan is entering the charts with a new hit, the Ice Spice Munchkin's Drink. So that's a commercial I worked on a while back. Here's the music that we ended up using for that commercial. Just some basic production music that you put underneath the bed. Underneath the voiceover, I'm sorry. And what we need to do is make sure that this section, obviously this is the louder section of the music, does not overpower the voiceover when they're blended together. So first, what I'm going to do is set my levels somewhere to make sure that, that this is not overpowering this. So we need this to be our bottom level. We're going to work from the middle out. We want to make sure that we set this first because this is the loudest underneath our music. Now, I can tell you right off the bat, I'm going to set this. Uh, here we go. This is this is our starting point. It's Ice Spice season. Duncan is entering the charts with a new hit, the Ice Spice loud, Munchkin's right? Drink. It's a little too loud. It's too much to actually hear the voiceover on top of the music. So we need to bring this centerpiece down. I want This is the part that we're going to deal with. So I'm just going to loop this until I get my, my levels right. Entering the charts with a new hit, the Ice Spice Munchkin's Drink. Frozen coffee blended with pumpkin munchkins, plus caramel drizzle, whipped cream, and more caramel drizzle on top. Yes, please. Entering the charts with a new hit, the Ice Spice Munchkin's Drink. Frozen coffee right blended there. with... So that's going to be our ending level. Now notice, we brought it down about 10 dB, all right, 10 decibels. Now this, this is our intro before the voiceover kicks in. I wanna hear that a little bit louder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set some points right here. I'll show you what those points are in just a second. And this is going to be our intro volume. I'm bringing this back up to the original level. Notice we brought it down about 10 dB. I just brought it up 9.6, so it's almost 10 dB. So here is the original level before we even messed with setting the middle volume. You ready? It's ice spice season. And then as soon as the voiceover kicks in, that's when we make our fade. The fade happens underneath the voiceover. It kind of disguises the volume change. If it was by itself, you'd pretty much notice it. You hear it kind of go down and, and get out of the way? Well, if I put the voiceover on top of it, it kind of disguises that, but we start hearing the voiceover after that point. Let's, let's listen to it again. It's ice spice season. Duncan is entering the charts. So now we've got our playback volume. This is how loud we want the music underneath 
the podcast intro, the commercial you're doing, whatever it is. But let's just say it's your podcast or your YouTube intro. Now, we want the same thing at the end. We want to bring back this as it fades out after we're done talking. Now, this could be just the intro and outro. It could be the entire podcast episode, however you want to do it. But this is how we're going to set that. Again, we're going to set our points and we're going to have that fade come back to our 9.9 .9 level, 10.2, that's close enough right there. And again, we're gonna have it ramp back up underneath that last little piece of voiceover, and then this will be the last little bit of music right here. So here's the last part. More caramel drizzle on top. Yes, please. And then that leaves us with the music to listen to on the way out the door. Now what we do, quite frankly, you know, just to pretty it up a little bit, we add a little fade to it. Yes, please. Okay, and that's how we end the spot right there. I'm sorry, not the spot. Your, your intro or your outro. These are just the samples I'm using here. This is what I wanted you to see. The higher volume that dips down underneath the voiceover, and then at the end of the episode, you're going to use the... Uh, you're going to use the voiceover to bring the volume back in so we can listen to the music as it fades out. All right. So that's one particular method. Now, let me show you a little trick to setting this part right here. I'm going to leave this under here and we're going to flip over to the actual uh, uh, music mixer screen. So here's the music mixer screen. During the charts with a new hit, the ice... Here's the, vo here's the voiceover, here is the uh, music, and then here's our master volume. And what I do to set this is first I bring down the music so it's out of the way. I don't even have to listen to it, I just need it out of the way. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my main volume down, okay? And this is where my voice is gonna sit. This is where we want that. Spice, munchkins, drink, now let's start to ease this pumpkin, back in pumpkin, until munchkin, we actually can make sense of the vo the uh, voiceover, but not so loud that it's that it's a normal listening level. We still want it too soft. You ready? We're gonna bring the master up, so I can hear it, but it's really not loud enough to listen to. The ice spice munchkins drink, frozen coffee blended with pumpkin munchkins plus caramel drizzle, whipped cream, and more caramel drizzle on top. Entering the charts with a new hit. So that's a good volume spice, just to listen to. Drink. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring the music back in just until it's discernible. You want to be able to maybe tell that there's a beat there, but you're really not going to completely comprehend the music, okay? It's another very low volume. Frozen coffee blended with Can't hear the music. Munchkins. Now I'm going to slowly Plus, bring it in. drizzle, whipped cream, and more caramel drizzle on top. Entering the charts with a new hit, the Ice Spice Munchkins Dream. I'm hearing a little bit Frozen of ukulele, coffee, but I really can't munchkins. quite tell the beat Plus, of the music yet. I'm going to go a little bit higher. And more caramel drizzle on top. Entering the charts with a new hit, the Ice Spice Munchkins Drink. Frozen there we go. Now I can really munchkins. tell what the music Plus, is. Caramel drizzle, right? Can you hear it? And more caramel drizzle on top. Entering the charts with a new hit. Okay. Now I'm going to bring this back up to zero coffee, where we started from. And this Plus, should be our right levels, and more maybe within just a hair of a tweak is all it will new hit, The Ice Spice Munchkins Drink. Frozen coffee blended with pumpkin munchkins plus caramel drizzle. That sounds pretty good. All right. So that's a good way to train your ear. You want it so you can barely hear the voiceover and then sneak, it, bring this down really low so you can barely hear the voiceover and then sneak in the music until you can just discern the beat and the music. You don't want to be able to hear and listen to the music. You just want to be able to say, oh yeah, that's a definite song that's back there. Then bring this back up to your normal listening level. And these should be in the right ratio or really close. I mean, we're talking within maybe a click or two at the most, something like that. You're going to be really close to where you need it to be, okay? And one other thing I can tell you about the music is if there's a lot of high end to the music, a lot of the soprano end, not so much the bass end, but the soprano end of the music, you might have to bring it down just a little bit more because the higher notes, the higher pitches, the higher tones, they tend to cut through and you can hear them a lot easier. So maybe if, if this is sitting here at minus 10, almost minus 11, 
we might need to bring that down to say 12 or 13, maybe even 14, if this were a very, if this were a piece of music that was really, that had a lot of high end to it. So just kind of keep that in mind. You may have to adjust or fudge the, uh, the levels just a little bit, even after you've got all of this set. And then you may or may not have that little tiny adjustment at the end. That should really put you in the ballpark and have you at a decent operating level. It's really very simple. Train your ear, you'll get it down pat in no time. Now, I've got a free gift for you as well. How to take all this content and turn it into little advertising snippets of it. I call it Slice and Dice. Check out the link down below, click on it, and we'll send you a copy. We'll get you access. It's a video. It's a trading video. We'll get you access to that video in just a matter of minutes. So sign up down below and we'll get it right to you. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of this. I hope this helped you uh, with your music endeavors on your podcast or your YouTube channel. I'm Nick Natarella. Thank you for watching.